Before I get into it, let me plug the Patreon group if you wanna do one-on-one -on -one video lessons with me, if you want me to critique videos of your tricks, or if you just want some of the exclusive videos that I post for the Patreon group, consider signing up. Link is in the description. Now, let's talk about today's rookie mistake. And this is one that I see so many people make. Uh, I observe this one when I'm teaching my students, and I observe this one when I'm watching beginners, and even some people who are past that beginner level skate. And today's mistake is dropping your heels, skating flat-footed. Now, this is a mistake that it kind of translates to other sports as well. For instance, boxing. Uh, you might have heard, if you're a fan of boxing, people talking about how you never want to be flat-footed. You want to be on your toes when you box. And with skateboarding, this is a very similar concept. So you might have seen some of my videos where I'm talking about pop and one of the instructions that I give all the time is to have the heel of your back foot up off of the board and to have only your toes and the ball of your foot on the tail of the board. And this is true for most tricks. There are instances where I will use more of my foot, for instance, with a pressure flip. However, even with a trick like a tray flip where my back foot is going across the tail of the board, I'm still going to be using my toes and have my heels up. And there's a good reason for this. When, when we're popping the board and our heel is down on the tail, basically gives us one movement, right? It gives us a piston. So it makes our leg, our foot, like a piston pushing into the tail. And that doesn't give us much control over what happens after we pop. But if we simply flex our ankle so that it's up, that turns that into sort of a lever. And it gives us the ability to push down and to flex to get ourselves up off the ground. And when you're able to use this motion with the rest of the weight that you're transferring into the board from the rest of your body, you're just gonna get better pop and you're gonna get better control than you're able to achieve by simply pushing down with that piston type motion. And this really makes the difference between a beginner and an intermediate to expert level skater. Uh, you'll see the majority of skaters that are good at what they do and especially people who can pop uh, using this type of motion. You're never going to see their heels, at least on the back foot, down on the board. Now, with your front foot, sometimes I'll have my toes up. When I, when I do a kick foot, for instance, and I'm going for height, my heel is going to be up off, the board, up off the board, even the front foot. But when I do a heel flip, obviously my heel is going to be down on the board. When I do other tricks, Maybe my entire front foot will be flat across the board, but my back foot is pretty much always going to be toes and ball of my foot in the, what I call the ollie box of the tail and my heel up. And the higher up you can get your heel, the more power you can drive into the tail. For instance, if you watch the slow-mo videos that I've been posting lately, you'll notice that I actually push up onto my toes before squatting down when I'm trying to pop very high. And this is something that I learned a while ago. It's sort of like winding up to throw a ball, winding up for a punch, even though you're not supposed to completely wind up, winding up for your back 360. It's sort of like that, winding up for your backside big spin. Uh, we wanna be able to generate as much force as possible and using our body in this way is gonna facilitate that. So if you have a hard time remembering this, you might want to try, and this is going to sound really funny, but you might want to try first walking on your toes, just practicing walking on your toes. Uh, and if you're having strength issues, one of the physical therapy exercises that I did involved me with a resistance band around my ankles, taking stuttered steps forward and backwards on my toes. You might want to try that. You can find resistance band exercises uh, all over the internet. So if you wanna look that up, you can find it pretty easily. And then once you're having an easier time walking that way or performing the exercises with the resistance band, the next thing you might wanna do is start to get on your board 
and just do basic ollies focusing on having your heel up off of the tail and you want to just do that over and over and over again with your ollie until it feels natural if anything feels natural on a skateboard i'm not sure if that's even a thing but then you can try to implement it with your other tricks so once you have a good time with it with your ollie you can add it to your kickflip you can add it to whatever but it's really going to help you if you're dropping your heel you're making a big mistake now, you've got a couple more rookie mistakes coming and then i'm not sure but i might have to call the series because uh you know there's only so many of these things that uh that i can think of now if you guys have any that you can think of and you want me to go over them you want me to like vet them and see if it's a big issue that i see see if it's something that you need to correct or if it's something you don't have to worry about that's a series that i might be interested in but yeah i got a couple more rookie mistakes coming and then i might be putting the series on pause but definitely try to get your back heel up off of the board it'll help you with your pop peace